Today we're going to test my battery heaters. What's going on guys? My name is Dan. Welcome to Freely Roaming. We have snow today. It actually snowed sometime in the middle of last night. We knew it was going to get cold. We knew there might be a chance of snow. We didn't know it was going to snow this much. We're here on the island of Hvar in Croatia, and it is not normal for it to snow here on the island. We're basically at sea level, maybe, I don't know, 50, 100 feet above sea level. We're about a mile from the coast, from the Adriatic Sea. And Hvar is known as the sunniest island in all of Croatia, and Croatia has over a thousand islands. In the last couple of weeks, we started to see spring, basically. Ever since I installed my heaters, the silicone heating elements to my lithium iron phosphate battery, there hasn't been temperatures below freezing. So I was thinking, well, you know what? Maybe I won't get a chance to actually test these heaters. And I was waiting and waiting for temperature to get cold, at least cold enough to be able to test them in like a realistic situation for once. And sure enough, I saw a couple days ago that there was forecast coming there was going to be below freezing temperatures overnight. And I didn't think it was going to be like this. Check this out. We've got probably about six inches of snow. It didn't get above freezing all day today. But all things considered, it's not actually that cold. We have had colder temperatures in the mid 20s high 20s right now it's probably just hovering about freezing like 33 34 degrees so the temperatures are okay but it is snowing as you can tell and the batteries are not charging because we have obviously overcast skies so we don't have any solar going on but it is a good opportunity for us to see how the battery heaters are going so i'm gonna take you guys down there to the van and check it out. We have had snow all day today. So the van is basically blanketed in the, in the layer of snow. It started to get a little bit warmer. So as you can see that we have kind of slush now on the ground. It's gonna freeze tonight. It's gonna go below freezing once the sun goes down. So we're actually gonna have some ice probably. So really tonight's gonna be the real test. But check it out, we've had all the snow here that was on the hood has fallen down to the ground. But we have a good layer of snow on the van right now. Check it out. That is fluffy, clean snow. Hmm. I should get the kids to come get some of this. Okay, so even though we're not charging because there's no sun, I can show you guys how the battery heater works by going in there and uh, seeing the temperature and seeing how quickly it heats up the temperature sensors. Okay, so here's the battery. I've got these uh, temperature switches turned off right now, mainly because I didn't want them to be turned on at night because there's not going to be any charge coming in anyways. Unless I'm plugged in the shore power, then I can turn it on. But if there was going to be charge overnight, then I would leave them on. If I'm just depending on solar completely, then there's no sense in turning them on at night because it'll just heat the battery up without any charge coming in. It'll just end up draining the battery. Because I do have it set up on a switch where I can turn on from over here. Just a little 40 amp DC, little DC uh, circuit breaker. There. Now you can see we've got this is the heater. This is connected to the heater because it's four degrees Celsius right now. It just turned on. And then this is the one that's controlling the fan which won't turn on. But what you'll see is the second I turn them on, detecting that it's at four degrees, it is set to turn on when it goes below five. And then it's set to turn off when it goes above seven. 
So right now it's four and that light means that it's on. So it's gonna take however long it is to get it up to seven before it shuts off. And what you'll see too is that this one is gonna go up a little bit faster than this one because of the position they are attached to the battery. This one's attached a little bit lower on the battery than this one. Since the heat is radiating from the top, if you saw if you saw my actual build, you'll see that it is heating elements underneath a sheet of aluminum, and the battery is sitting on top of the aluminum sheet. And because this one is lower on the side of the battery, this is going to get the heat radiated to it first. And then you'll see this one climb up as well, which means as the heat rises on the in the battery this will reach temperature slightly slower than this one. And that tells me that it's actually working because as the heat goes from the bottom of the battery to the top, you'll see the uh, steady rise. So I'm gonna let this go until it hits seven and you'll see that light turn off. Shouldn't take very long. So I'm using my Victron app on my phone. If I go to the battery sense, You see the battery sense currently showing that it's 41 degrees that it's detecting. And the battery sense is also taped to the side of the battery. So in order for this heating to do anything to my uh, charging, because my battery sense temperature sensor is going to tell the solar charge controllers whether or not to allow incoming current into the batteries. And that's what protects the actual batteries from being charged when it's too cold. And as this goes up, the battery sense temperature should also go up. And once it reaches above a certain degree, it's actually set at 41 right now. And it's actually fine to charge because 41 is about 5 degrees C. And that is the default cutoff point for my uh, Victron charge controllers. So it's slightly warmer inside here than it is outside. But once, uh, if it was below 41, it will cut off. So all I want to do is I want to make sure that this temperature does go up as this goes up. As you can tell now, just in that short amount of time, this temperature has gone up to 5 and this has gone up to 4.4. And we'll just uh, keep that going until it hits 7. Okay, so you can see we're up to 6.8 over here. This side's up to 8.3. So as it rises up, hits this temperature sensor first, and then it starts to dissipate above, and it hits that one, so that's why this is higher than this one. And also, on my Victron battery sense over here, it started at 41 Fahrenheit, and now I'm reading 43 Fahrenheit. That's about to cut off, so before it does that, I'm going to show you how much power it's drawing. It is drawing exactly 69 watts right now, and then once it hits 7, this will drop. And because I know that the fridge is not on, that's a fairly accurate reading because there's nothing else really on in the van. And once the fridge turns on, that's going to change. So let's see what happens when it hits 7. My power consumption should go down to next to nothing. And then... Um, Oh, there it goes. Power consumption just went down to minus six. Yeah, so this was drawing about 62 watts. So if I go back to my battery sense, I will see that it's now still at 43 Fahrenheit. This is uh, the way that the temperature sensor works on the battery sense compared to these is the battery sense is just a box and then it's attached directly to the casing of the battery, but I'm not exactly sure what part of the battery sense is the temperature sensor is at, so it's going to be a little bit off of this. Um, the fact that I know that the temperature went up, it's a good sign, so now it's like continuing to go up a little bit, even though after it turned off, 7.1, 8.6. So what will happen is you want to adjust these settings to kind of cater to your situation. I have it go on at 5, go off at 7, 
So this is not going to turn on until the battery drops below 5 again. So if it's cold through the night, it'll just kind of cycle up and down, up and down like this. Now I'll put on the screen exactly how long it took to go from the temperature that it was to 7. And that way we can calculate just exactly how much power it's using to heat the battery. And the reason why I have it on the switch is um, I don't need this to be on, you know, in the middle of the night when I'm not getting solar if I'm not plugged into shore power. But I do want it to be on when shore power is plugged in. If you're never going to be plugged in the shore power, what you could do is get a, a 12 volt uh, timer switch and just have this whole system be off whenever uh, it is nighttime. But that does require some maintenance. You gotta, you know, kind of if your time zone changes, if you're driving from one place to another that, you know, that may have different sunlight, or if, uh, you know, if you have uh, uh, going up in latitude where you're gonna have more sun because you're up in the Arctic Circle in the summer, you have sun year round in the summer, you gotta adjust to that. But this way I just know I can turn it off whenever I don't need it to drain power. So I'm pretty happy with this setup. It works pretty good. And like I said, you know, um, if I'm not plugged in the shore power, I can pretty much just uh, leave this the way it is. And as the sun comes up, it'll always be safe for it to charge. And my solar charge controller from Victron anyways, using the battery sense won't put any charge into the battery even if the battery um, heaters are not on. So that's safe from it. This is just so that I can take advantage of charge when I need to. So that's it guys. I want to show you guys practically how this thing works. I think it's working really good. I'm happy with it. And uh, if you guys have built something like this, I'd love to see it. Put a link below to your own project. I'd love to see how things are working out for you. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.